Good morning. My name is Maureen Chung. Welcome to Devotional of 2024, Series 3, Part 1. And the Bible passage today is 1 Kings chapter 15, verse 9 to 24. And the title is, Asa did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. The Bible says, In the twentieth year of Jeroboam, king of Israel, Asa became king of Judah. And he reigned in Jerusalem for 41 years. His grandmother's name was Makkah, daughter of Abishalom. Asa did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, as his father David had done. He expelled the male shrine prostitutes from the land and got rid of all the idols his ancestors had made. He even deposed his grandmother Maka from her position as queen mother because she had made a repulsive image of for the worship of Asherah. Asa cut it down and burned it in the Kidron Valley. Although he did not remove the high places, Asa's heart was fully committed to the Lord all his life. He brought into the temple of the Lord the silver and gold and the articles that he and his father had dedicated. There was war between Asa and Baasha, king of Israel, throughout their reigns. Baasha, king of Israel, went up against Judah and fortified Ramah to prevent anyone from leaving or entering the territory of Asa, king of Judah. Asa then took all the silver and gold that was left in the treasuries of the Lord's temple and of his own palace. He entrusted it to his officials and sent them to Ben-Hadad, son of Tabrimum, the son of Hezion, the king of Aram, who was ruling in Damascus. Let there be a treaty between me and you, he said, as there was between my father and your father. See, I'm sending you a gift of silver and gold. Now break your treaty with Baasha, king of Israel, so he will withdraw from me. Ben-Hadad agreed with King Asa and sent the commanders of his forces against the towns of Israel. He conquered Aijon, Dan, Abubeth, Makkah, and all Kinnereth in addition to Naphtali. When Basha heard this, he stopped building Ramah and withdrew to Terza. Then King Asa issued an order to all Judah. No one was exempt, and they carried away from Ramah the stones and timber Basha had been using there. With them, King Asa built up Jiba and Benjamin, and also Mizpah. As for all the other events of Asa's reign, all his achievements, and all he did, and the cities he built, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? In his old age, however, his feet became diseased. Then Asa rested with his ancestors and was buried with them in the city of his father David. And Jehoshaphat, his son, succeeded him as king. Unlike the capsule remark on Jeroboam's reign in 1 Kings chapter 14, verse 22a, Judah did evil in the eyes of the Lord. The author of 1 Kings comments in 15 verse 11, Asa did what was right in the eyes of the Lord as his father David had done. Who is Asa? He is the grandson of Rehoboam and the great-grandson of Solomon. Rehoboam was king over Judah from 930 to 913 BC before Christ. His son Abijah reigned for three short years and was also disobedient to the Lord God. 
Asa succeeded his father Abijah and reigned in Jerusalem for 41 years from 910 to 869 BC before Christ. In the case of Rehoboam, his mother's name is mentioned as Nama the Ammonite. The author implies that the evil path Rehoboam has chosen is somewhat influenced by his mother when the Ammonites are notorious for worshipping the false god Molech. It is likely that Nama has misled her son Jeroboam uh, Jehoboam to worship false gods while forsaking the true god Jehovah Yahweh. In the case of Asa, his grandmother's name is mentioned as Maka. However, this idol worshipping grandmother is deposed from her position as queen mother because she made a repulsive image of Asherah in verse 13. Asa has the idol cut down and burned. In addition, Asa expels the male shrine prostitutes from his country and destroys the idols in his land. His heart is fully committed to the Lord all his life. Verse 14. In Asa, we see the grace of God. God steps into his life despite the evil influences of his ancestors. God breaks the ungodly soul ties to his ancestors. In my pastoral experience, I have witnessed many times God's saving acts. I shall mention the story of Sister C. She was heavily influenced by her idol-worshipping mother. According to her husband, she had a table full of idols and a wall full of posters of idols. But another sister from our church led Sister C to trust in Jesus Christ. What happened next was an activity of house cleaning. She brought out all her idols and posters and paraphernalia to the driveway at the front of the house. We wrapped them with newspapers, put them in garbage bags, and crushed all of them with a hammer. We prayed for the cleansing of the house and dedicated Sister C to our beloved Christ. She has not erred from her faith in Jesus these many years. In due course, her husband and her daughter came to accept Jesus. Furthermore, her husband's nephew accepted Christ before he died of cancer. The rippling effect continues. Praise the Lord. Yes, ungodly soul ties can be broken when God intervenes. A noteworthy incident about Asa fighting the foreign army of Cush or Egypt is recorded in 2 Chronicles chapter 14, verse 9 to 15. Asa was worried about his looming defeat. He prayed, Lord, there is no one like you to help the powerless against the mighty. Help us, Lord our God, for we rely on you, and in your name we have come against this vast army. Lord, you are our God. Do not let mere mortals prevail against you. Second Chronicles chapter 14, verse 11. God answered Asa's prayer by striking down the army of Cush. As a result of their victory, the men of Judah carried off a large quantity of goods, sheep and goats, and camels. The kingdom of Judah enjoyed peace and prosperity because God gave them rest. However, in the 36th year of Asa's reign in Judah, Basha, king of Israel, fortified the city of Ramah near their border with Judah to prevent the citizens of Israel and Judah from crossing into each other's territory. Moreover, Basha, king of Israel, had signed a treaty with Ben-Hadad, king of Aram, 
hereby threatening Asa and the kingdom of Judah in the south. Asa was scared. Therefore, Asa bribed the king of Aram with the silver and gold from God's temple and his own palace, asking for political alliance with the king of Aram to nullify the threat from Israel. Ben-Hadad agreed. He sent his army against Israel. This turn of events caused Basha to abandon his fortification of the border city Ramah. Asa's men took all the building materials from the city of Ramah and used them to build up his own cities. I am puzzled by Asa's downfall from fully trusting in God to relying on the king of Aram for security. When Asa prayed to God for protection from Cush or Egypt, God answered his prayer. Now, in the last few years of his reign, Asa turns to a foreign king for help against his blood relative, the king of Israel. Has Asa forgotten the deliverance by Jehovah Yahweh in days bygone? Do I commit the same mistake of forgetting the deliverance by God in days past? Do I say, that was then and this is now? Perhaps God will look away this time in the history of Daniel's three friends who were caught not worshipping the image of the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar and were condemned to die by being thrown into the furnace of fire. The three men courageously said, If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Daniel chapter 3 verse 17 to 18. Such trust in the power of God, the confidence to say, even if he does not save us, we will not worship anything else, comes from great faith in God. I sincerely hope I can live in this trust and faith, even at the face of death. In the 39th year of Asa's reign, he was afflicted with a disease in his feet. Though his disease was severe, he did not seek help from the Lord. The physicians couldn't heal him, and he died in the 41st year of his reign. This is written in 2 Chronicles chapter 14, verses 12 to 13. Asa forgot the power and the goodness of God, not just for a moment, but for the last five years of his life until his death. What a pity. On October the 7th, 2023, terrorists of Hamas broke out from Gaza to kill and t- kidnap Israeli citizens near their border. Over 1,200 Israelis were killed and over 240 people were kidnapped as hostages. Soon Israel declared war on Hamas and called up 360,000 army reservists to prepare for a strike into Gaza. Many missiles have been launched from Israel into Gaza and vice versa. By now, over 20,000 of Gazans have died. On whom or what do God's chosen people rely? Does Israel rely on the deliverance of the Lord God like the younger king Asa did? Or does Israel rely on the support of Aram or USA like the older king Asa did? Or does Israel rely on her overpowering military might as medicine to heal herself of the life-threatening disease of war? It is desirable to see God's deliverance and healing on our knees. In the end, this is a lesson for me. I hope I have the faith to say at the face of death, even if God does not save me, I will not worship anything else. That will be a beautiful finish. I seek to rely on God alone for the rest of my life. 
First Kings 15 verse 11 says, Asa did what was right in the eyes of the Lord as his father David had done. God's verdict takes into account the entirety of one's life. David and Asa had their sins, and I have mine. But God is merciful. He forgives when we return to him. Praise and thanks to our everlasting God. My friends, fellow believers, look up to him for help and deliverance. There's no one else. Thank you for spending time with me. May God bless you. See you tomorrow. Please like and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to get new video updates. Thank you.